October 17th, Monday, October 17th, 2022. This is uh, the regular meeting of the Board of Directors of Clackamas Fire District Number One. At Clackamas Fire, we are always here for you. We value our people and the people we serve. Our focus is established on teams, trust, empowerment, accountability, mindset, and service. The regular monthly meeting is called to order at uh, five o'clock for ORS 192.610 to 192.690. For ORS 192.650, this meeting is being recorded. The video recording of this meeting will be placed on the Five Must Fire website. Changes to the agenda. Chief Brown, are there any changes? No, no changes. No changes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, under OB1, can we add a report um, on the Civil Service Commission? They met under last week. OB1. OB okay. Are you okay with that? Yes. Very right, fine. Any other changes? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes of the regular board meeting on September 19, 2022. Does any board member have any comments or changes to share regarding those minutes? Hearing no changes uh, being suggested, the minutes from the regular board meeting on September 19, 2022 stand approved as read. Public comment. I will now call for statements from citizens regarding the district business. Tracy, did you have anyone sign up for public comment? We did not. We did not. Okay. If there's someone who did not have a chance to sign up prior to the meeting who does have a public comment, please use your raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in, you can select star nine to indicate a raised hand and star six to unmute and mute. Anybody? Okay. Uh, business B1. Request board approval of the revised board policy manual. Assistant Chief Brian Stewart. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, last month, we had the opportunity to see uh, the staff's recommended changes uh, and revisions to the board of directors policy manual uh, for the first month. Uh, this is the second month as required uh, for the review and discussion about it. Uh, based on conversations last month, staff did make some changes to the packet, and I thought I would just walk through those changes today. Uh, so the first change would be on page 14, and if I use the page numbers, it's your packet page number 14. And this was uh, a minor change to the introductory paragraph, and then we reworked the timeline um, of annexations, mergers, uh, to, try to, to, to try to capture um, some of the feedback that we received from Director Searing. Uh, and if you have anything else, be happy to, to revise that again. But that was the, the change that you would see there. On page 24 of your packet, uh, we went ahead and made the change from uh, under 7.8 from biannual or biannually to semi-annually to be more clear for uh, the reader. And then on page 36 of your packet, uh, we were able to have GIS update our service area map. So you'll see our legal boundaries within uh, are identified by the green shading, and then our own contract city of Gladstone with the pink shading. That's page 36 of your packet. And then the other change uh, that we had talked about uh, or, or anticipated was on page 40 of your packet, which is the list of board committees and liaisons. Uh, there were a few changes on this page, and it'd be really up to uh, you, Madam President, if there were any other changes that you wanted to see. Uh, or the I, yes, sir. I have a question on that the Clackamas Fire District map. Yes, sir. Uh, does that include the, all of our district? Is it including the contact for service, or is it excluded? No. So the the green area, the green area on the map is our legal boundaries. And then the pink area uh, is the city of Gladstone, which is the only area that we have full contract for services. Which area? Uh, Gladstone, the pink area, station. Oh, okay, okay. I don't, yeah, okay, I see that little pocket. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, 
And then, uh, Marilyn, as we spoke about earlier, if you wanted to add Oregon OSHA as a representative uh, on that list, or if you wanted to handle that differently. Um, we'll just can't, uh, note that it's not somebody that we were technically appointed because we no. didn't ask us to. Okay. So, yeah. um, so those were the changes that uh, we had anticipated. And then uh, Marilyn provides some comment back uh, beginning on page 77 of your packet. Uh, there's a section it is our debt management policy and this was a uh, a section uh, as finance is working through working out of shell services is working through um, all the policies and procedures uh, and, and mechanisms uh, that they had not tackled um, in terms of any uh, substantive changes um, and with that uh, we had not gone through and made any title changes so this policy the debt management policy refers to the finance director we don't have that position anymore. Uh, we have a chief financial officer, Mark Whitaker, and then the next position would be uh, the finance manager. Uh, but within this, it refers to the finance director um, and that should be updated. Um, staff is happy to make those changes in the document um, easy, readily enough, um, or Marilyn had an alternate suggestion of uh, along the lines of, for the purposes of the, this debt management policy, uh, finance director shall mean uh, the chief financial officer or their designee as part of the uh, the motion when we ask you to approve it. Um, however, you folks would like to address that, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, otherwise, I think we've had uh, a couple opportunities to review this. I have I have a comment. I wanted to let the other directors and the staff know. You know, we take too much things for granted. When we were at the IGA meeting with the Gladstone the other day. They said they did not know we are we are not Clackamas County file. They thought we are a county agency. This is a three councilor talking. So it was really surprising to me. That's why I was emphasizing about that map and Brian is going to send that to the city manager so that for the information of the city councilors to show what constitutes what is our district and what is Clackamas County. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, after the, or in, while we were in the interagency meeting, I went ahead and forwarded the same map that you have uh, to Jackie, the city administrator, to share. Um, and if there's no other questions, uh, staff would request that the board approve the updated packet. Uh, as part of that, there are the board committee, the liaison list, which is attached to that. Um, there was only one change, and that is the shift in the executive committee. Um, the uh, replacement of uh, former President uh, Joseph with um, Vice President Siri. So, and in addition, as to note, these are not formal appointments, uh, or OSHA has requested that there be uh, someone up, uh, from the fire, fire, fire districts um, on their advisory council, and they requested that Jay Cross serve in that position, and he's agreed to do so. Yes, I've been in communication. Matter of fact, I was just reading the email from them just now. So yes, I am there now. So. The future funding um, task force will remain a task force for now, not a separate committee serving under the executive committee, which is, is um, we have to have a task force has to be assigned somewhere, and that's where it is assigned. But there are no changes to that. So, having if there are no further questions or inquiries about the policy or anything. I have a motion to approve the revised board policy manual and with the language noted by Stuart regarding the uh, finance director language being amended to mean the, the chief financial officer. Or, so, is, or there does it. So moved. A second. Moved and seconded. Any further questions? Thomas, you okay with it? Okay. Tracy, will you please call the roll? Thomas? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. Chris? Yes. And Jay? Yes. Okay. D2, request board approval of resolution 22-05, authorizing interfund loans for fiscal year 2022-23. Chief <laughs> Financial Officer Mark Whitaker. 
Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I apologize. This, this probably would have been more appropriate to do at the same time last month as the, the tax anticipation notes because it, it serves a similar purpose. Um, but essentially what, what this is asking for, and it's, it's required under um, Oregon local budget law, um, is to the ability to, to, to loan money from our capital projects fund and our grants fund to the general fund and the wildland mitigation fund temporarily. Um, because those those two funds have some cash reserves, whereas the general fund and wildland mitigation fund can will potentially run out of funds towards the end of this month, early November. So it allows to transfer cash from those other two funds to those funds temporarily, and then those funds would, would pay it back um, once we receive our, our property tax revenue, or in the case of the wildland mitigation fund, when they get their reimbursements from the grant and um, conflagrations and things like that. Um, so it's just it's just a temporary measure that will allow us to do that. Um, I think it I think it makes sense to first borrow from our internal funds before we borrow from the tax anticipation notes and have to pay interest on it. Um, so um, I would just ask if there's any questions. Otherwise, staff requests that you approve the resolution. Well, although there's no outside interest payable, in fact, the fund that borrows has to pay it back with interest on them. It is. They're only required to pay it back if it is a capital loan, or if it, or if it extends beyond the current fiscal year. So since, um, since we're paying it back within the fiscal year, and it's not to finance a capital project, we're not required to to have interest. Um, if the board wanted to say charge interest, we we could. But like I said, it's 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 really a short gap measure between now and end of November. Um, so I, I don't think we, we need to do the interest. Mark. Is this in addition to the that uh, credit line that we have like a two million or three million dollars? Is that in addition to that? Yeah, this is an addition to that. So that's that's a three million dollar tax anticipation note, which we may that's need correct. to use. Um, but first, we would want to we'd want to use these internal funds, um, and so we we have the tax anticipation note lined up, um, and we'll we're we're watching the bank balance closely because if we're going to use it, it would be. The last week of October, first week in November, that we need to. How much do? Money. How much is available for us to use in the interfund? Um, uh, there, there's three point five million roughly in the capital replacement fund, and, and up to two million in the in the grants fund. So just over, just five over and five million, and yeah. um, essentially we will we would definitely need that um, for the payroll at the end of October. So uh, we, so we probably may not use that uh, the other credit line would it uh correct yeah. there, there's thank a good chance we, we, we will not need it okay thank you anybody else okay yeah i think this is good mark i appreciate that i you've heard a few of us on the board including me say we need to live within our means we need to spend our own money before we're asking for other money first and so i uh, appreciate the fact that you're you're doing this and uh, than we are spending internally with the idea that we're going to pay it back very quickly if we need to use it. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Do I hear a motion to approve resolution 22-05 authorizing interfund loans for fiscal year 2022-22? So moved. Second. <laughs> That'd be a six. Yeah. That was a three-way tie. Your guess, Tracy. <laughs> Please call the roll. Okay, uh, Chris? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jay? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Thomas? Yes. Okay, thank you. Item B3, request board approval of GEMT contract amendment with public consulting group to financial officer Whitaker. Okay, this is on page 104 of your of your packet, and this is asking for a contract amendment for uh, likely more than fifty thousand um, dollars with our consultant um, PCG that has provided our GEMT calculations and services um, for the past four fiscal years, and I'm asking to extend it uh, for for an additional year. Um, essentially, they they do all of our um, correspondence with OHA on this reimbursement. They do the calculations and, and the spreadsheets and the cost report and all the follow-up questions from, from the Oregon Health Authority. Um, and in return, you know, their, their contract has been the same since since the district entered into it um, at 15% at of the of the non-federal share, uh, which which varies in amount by year depending on how much um, we're getting through the, the GMT program. 
Um, and I, I put a chart there of, of the, the fee history. Um, just a, an informal um, look around. I mean, that's that's kind of the, the standard fee that, that, that you'll see. Um, it seemed prudent to continue with the same consultant who has the background and experience um, both with us and in the state of Oregon. Um, and um, so once again, I would, I would recommend the approval of the, the, the one-year extension. Question? Yes, I do, Marilyn. Uh, to, to Mark, is that a trend that is going down? We started out about 143, then go to 68. Why is that trending down? Is there any particular reason for a? You know, I. Well, I should I should say that 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 twenty twenty one dollar is is an estimate because at the time this this packet was put together, we had not finalized the the two thousand twenty twenty one amount with the Oregon Health Authority. Yeah. And so actually, that that's not going to be that low. Um, it's going to be roughly the same as as nineteen twenty. So it's 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 kind of it's kind of stabilized. Mm -hmm. I think in general they're expecting this this amount to, to decline over time um, because they're looking the the long term goal of of the health authority and, and Medicaid is to to move patients off of this fee for service um, Medicaid plan and onto the CCO Medicaid plan which is which is funded outside of this particular GMT program so we would expect fewer and fewer transports from Medicaid fee for service as we go forward. Um, but it's it's a relatively new program, so it's it's hard to know where it might stabilize out at. Yeah, I remember when this was started, but I'm just wondering, is it because there are more programs going into Medicare and Medicare, that why uh, less and less participation from our transportation? Yeah, like I said, I think I think they're they're transferring more folks to to the CCOs, the coordinated care organizations. Okay. Um, and so we, we we actually received payment from two GEMT programs now. They started, it used to just be this this GEMT for fee for service Medicaid patients. Uh -huh. So GEMT for coordinated care organization Medicaid patients. And so we're also okay. receiving revenue from that. Um, and that is a much simpler process. We don't need a consultant to do that for us. The state just sends us um, sends us the revenue for that and they do all the calculations and, and the work. So that's a little simpler. Um, and, and we don't have to share in the, the fees, so. Okay. Is that, do you have any other questions, Thomas? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, anybody else? Okay, do I hear a motion to approve a one-year contract amendment with Public Consulting Group, LLC, to file the ground emergency medical transport GEMT reimbursement request for fiscal year 2021-22? Second. And seconded. Thank you. Tracy, please call the roll. Jay? Yes. Chris? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Jim? Yes. And Thomas? Yes. All right, thank you. Other business, OB1, a board committee and liaison reports, interagency committee, uh, vice president steering, director Jason. Yeah, I attended a uh, oversight committee with the Gladstone. Uh, it the meetings are going very well. It is uh, they were mainly discussed, uh, give us the update about the remodeling of the station 22 and the completion. And then city councilor and the mayor who are present were giving us some feedback, grassroots level. The community seemed to be very appreciative of our performance. And they are realizing that we are providing the is it EMT, Brian? Paramedic. A paramedic, because of the paramedic on the truck that, uh, I don't know how they know, but the, the city councilor and the mayor seem to be in the know and they are giving us a good feedback about uh, appreciation from the community. It's a very small community. So, and also the other activities, our, uh, chiefs and uh, captains and everybody is participating in their community. Brian, if you have anything else to update? Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, I think the the interagency meeting uh, last Thursday was was pleasant and good. We had a, a brief meeting uh, in terms of uh, all the issues uh, that we could possibly cover. Uh, we spent a little bit of time talking about 
community events. We spent more time talking about, I think, us as a, as a broader organization and all that we bring, um, such as the paramedic level service. Um, so I think those were those were positives. Uh, they were very uh, appreciative of the level of service, and that was clear. Uh, we didn't have a normal attendees. Uh, Jim was unable to attend due to technical difficulties, and uh, Mindy Garlington, one of their counselors, was did not attend. But Tammy Stemple, their mayor, attended in, in her stead or, or joined us for the day, um, and they did a good job of describing like uh, Thomas shared. Uh, not just their sense of the appreciation for the service that we provide, but the bigger piece and their connection with the community and getting that feedback from the community members about the service that we provide. I think that's a key piece. Um, we also introduced to them, uh, and spoke a little bit about their own, but introduced to them about our future funding um, task force and the levy. Um, they were essentially supportive of it, uh, appreciative that it, it doesn't conflict with theirs um, in terms of timing. We're going potentially in May uh, they would be going in November. Uh, so they're appreciative that the timing fits and um, they are uh, interested to see where we head and what they may need to do with theirs and how we might be able to support them in their process. Also, uh, we met with the city of Milwaukee and all this meet IGM meetings and Jim will attest to that. We are trying to build a good relationship and let the uh, city administrators or council or mayor to know what's coming and what we are planning. And so we don't have too much conflict with their levies. I'm city of Milwaukee may be putting on a levy in, in May. So we may have a challenge with that. But uh, we, in, last time we were able to talk them out of putting the levy the same time when we were doing the bond. So that helped us in, the, in a way. Uh, communicating with these city councilors and city managers uh, have been a good PR for our, our board and understanding our philosophy of customer service and community service. Jim, would you want to update anything about the Milwaukee? No, I think you cover it well, um, but I could speak on the Sandy meeting. That was the third interagency meeting that we had since our last board meeting please um, please good meeting continue to have a great partnership with sandy uh, since that meeting they had a board meeting in which uh the sandy board asked uh more or less formally what it would look like for us to present them a contract for service so uh, that work is being done by our staff as we speak it, i don't know if it's too preliminary to speak on that but i believe Sandy's next board meeting is this Thursday of this week, at which our staff will be presenting to their board what it potentially could look like with the contract for service if we were to go down that road and uh, and look at that as an option. Uh, so that was really most of the discussion of the meeting. Um, and can we speak about that, or is it do we just wait till November? I think it's uh, probably better to wait for November. Okay. And yeah, we'll do the yeah. same presentation there. But uh, some more to follow on all of that in November. Yeah, on that Sandy meeting, Steve presented a, a fantastic document showing Sandy, you know, a side-by-side -side comparison of what it what it means, what it is to be going alone. And I thought it really was an eye-opener for the board from Sandy to understand that, and they were going to take it back to the full board. So thanks to Steve for making it uh, easy for us to understand and compare. Questions for Thomas or Jim, anybody? <clears throat> okay, thank you gentlemen. Now, uh, civil service liaisons or what's the thought? Do, I can do the foundation first. You wanna do, okay, you wanna do the foundation next? Sure, okay. uh, big thing is November 12th is the benefit auction. So bring your, Bring your uh, checkbooks and credit cards and buy lots of stuff. So uh, <laughs> that's the that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, so that's um, and other than that, um, Chief Brown, you got anything on to add about that? So that's really the topic of the of the foundation right now. I think Chief Whitey might be on, and not sure if he has anything. Uh, could be on in just a little bit. Not there he is right there. If he wants to add anything to that, yeah. 
Yeah, not a lot to add. I was unable to attend the previous meeting. Um, the biggest thing in, uh, was just shared is the date of it, locations, Greg Gables, um, hopefully a, for a good event. Uh, and our own Isaac Hamilton will be emceeing the event. Oh, love it. Doug, okay. what time is it? I have to look. I believe it's 5 or 6 p.m. Five. 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 At Greg Gables. 5 o'clock? Yeah. So I had a contact from John Trotter who asked that uh, the board uh, show us in, uh, support for it by spending money. <laughs> Preferably buying tables and there are lots of uh, sponsorship opportunities available and he strongly encourages everybody to participate. Okay. Any other questions regarding the foundation dinner? This is a big fundraiser for the uh, foundation. They've been able to have it, so it'd be great to have a good turnout. So now, <laughs> civil service liaison. Uh, the meeting here, I think last week, last week, civil service met. Um, their main things, they reviewed the new hires, promotions, uh, those coming off probation and retirements. Uh, they also approved the testing list results for the suppression lieutenants and also the suppression battalion chief results. And then they uh, reviewed and approved some edits to the apparatus operator and division chief testing. Uh, pretty short meeting. Pizza was good. Steve, mm -hmm. did you have anything you wanted to add? No, I believe you covered it all. There's the two new positions or the two testing processes were approved and they're underway right now for those two positions we talked about. Questions for Director Hunt? Thank you. Uh, is Silver Service not full complement? Yes. Uh, Jim Jim Dilley wasn't there. He was on a cruise ship somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we filled all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, that there's all five all five members are in place. Yeah. Thank you. All right. OB two board information updates and comment. Does any board member have any additional information or updates or comments that they can share? Okay. Yeah, I got a couple things. So, um, first one is yes, I was once wobbled into being uh, a representative either through the OFBDA or Clemson's Fire District One to represent at the uh, Oregon OSHA Fire Service Advisory Committee. So, uh, General, I'm not sure if that's how that works. Maybe we'll talk about that later, but yes, I have agreed to do that. So I guess I'll be the the, uh, uh, the person for not only the district, but for OFDDA as well. So um, uh, yeah, I sent him an email back today, said I had no idea what I got myself into, but uh, I asked the wrong question at the right time, I guess. So, um, and uh, let's see, the uh, I was contacted by Chief Scott Lewis from Gresham Fire uh, last week or week before about uh, he wanted to uh, know, he wanted me to put him in contact with the chief at the fire district that is responsible for purchasing apparatus and uh, fire engine and stuff. And I said, you don't want to talk to any of those guys. You need to talk to Bill. So I uh, gave him, I put him in contact with uh, Bill Bischoff. And so they got something cooking. I'm not sure exactly what they've got going. Fortunately, I got out of that email loop, but uh, I'm not sure where they're going, but it sounds like a another relationships building out there. And I think it could be good for both agencies as we move forward with uh, some apparatus um, purchase and stuff. So um, I was encouraged by that. And uh, the last one is uh, uh, President Wall and I and a whole bunch of folks from the district um, attended a, um, a diversity and equity uh, training session last week. And uh, uh, although it's pretty fresh on everybody's mind, I, I've asked, uh, Chief Brown to uh, maybe uh, staff for somebody could do a little five or eight minute uh, presentation. It might even be the chief's report tonight. I'm not sure where we're going with that, but give us a little five to eight minute uh, presentation on the success of that day. It was a great day, a great learning opportunity. A lot of a lot of great stuff came out of that day. And I'm very encouraged on where, where we're moving as an organization forward on that and uh, uh, more to come on that. But I guess we'll be talking more about that either this month or next month, but I'll leave that to you. Um, and that's pretty much all I've got. So, questions for Okay. I have. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I just like um, over the weekend online, there was posted a video uh, put together in another, another jurisdiction that shall remain nameless. 
Um, there were some comments made by an elected official from that jurisdiction. And on behalf of elected officials everywhere, I would like to apologize to our firefighters and staff uh, for the things that were said. It was unfortunate. It was in many ways despicable and uh, they're not true. So I hope that our, our team understands that we appreciate what they've done. We know what they've done and we will keep that in the forefront and these comments will be addressed in the appropriate manner. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. I that. concur. <laughs> Thank you. Chris, are you able to elaborate on that? Are you going to have some private, con per can I have personal conversation? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow, Thomas. There, okay. I don't really want to give him the, the courtesy of any more bandwidth than I have. Okay, thank you. OB3, please defend the task force update. Uh, we met again, we, we've gone to weekly meetings. We met again last week and reviewed the talking points and frequently asked questions. I think that, that everyone got an email, I think uh, went out yesterday or this morning. Uh, we kind of finalized, we made some changes and, and just kind of looking at how to present it best. And uh, we also had them create a handout and a poster that I believe the chief um, probably will report on in a bit. Uh, took to, uh, they, they turned it around, Coastline turned it around really fast so that we could use the opportunity of the, the event that the chief was at Saturday um, to basically give people the idea and just start talking to the community about what we're, what we're considering and what we're looking at. And uh, so, as I said, the task force is now taking, we're gonna meet every Thursday, um, <clears throat> larger group once a month, but, but the main core group is gonna meet weekly through at least the end of the year. Questions? Any questions, Thomas? No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, informational items, division and department reports, office of the fire chief, Chief Brown. Thank you so much. I really have three items that I'm, I'm going to focus on. As hard as it is for me to not speak to the highlight section of the fire chief's report, those are mostly Chief Peters' report out, and I think he would throw something at me if I started talking about the things that he's going to talk about. Mm -hmm. So I will <laughs> not talk about those things. But on a serious note, um, Friday morning at 5.30 in the morning, I received a phone call from uh, Office Chief Neely that uh, we had a mayday uh, with firefighters trapped. And um, oh, wow. it's a phone call that I never want to ever, that I ever thought I was going to have. And um, immediately we found out that, uh, that they were okay. Um, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, Immediately, we found out that they were okay and we went to the fire ground. And um, uh, and when I got to the fire ground, I, I saw um, four of the five firefighters that were trapped um, at rehab, uh, hugged them, and um, was glad to see them okay. And then went into the fire scene and, and met Chief Neelick there and uh, talked to the incident commanders, talked to uh, everybody that was on scene, and everyone was shooken up. Um, uh, it just shows that there is no incident that we respond to that is not routine. There are no routine incidents that we respond to. A, a bread and butter, structure fire, <clears throat> residential fire that 95% of the time we put out within six to eight minutes uh, almost uh, could have could have killed four to five of our members. And so um, it just shows the dangers that our firefighters face on a daily basis to be here for the citizens that we've sworn an oath to protect. And so um, really, really glad and proud of the company officers, the firefighters, the drivers, the incident commanders, um, and their training kicking in. Um, uh, a rescue group was established. Um, and as soon as everything was wound up, it was unwound because of the training that our firefighters have. And they were able to self-extricate and come back in to um, get one of the guys that, that was was trapped and, and get him out. And so um, just just a, a real close call for, for the Clackamas Fire family and uh, glad that they're okay. 
Um, there is a uh, more to come out of that event because out of everything that we go on, we there's learning opportunities for us all. And so that uh, um, I look forward to to our people being able to share uh, what happened and, and what they saw to help future uh, firefighters for Clackamas Fire Family so that that event doesn't happen again. Um, the training that uh, Director Cross was talking about, both President Wong and Director Nick, yesterday. Nick, yes, before sir. you move on, I have a question. Do we have, I'm sure you do, but I can't remember exactly the details. Do we have some kind of a mental health support team program for those firefighters who gets into mayday or trauma like that? I'm sorry, Thomas. Uh, what, what did you, what you do ask we that? have? Do we have a program for uh, some kind of a counseling or therapy uh, within our system? I'm gonna let Chief Mulek speak to that, uh, if if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thomas. So we uh, in this situation, we we pretty much rolled out every uh, everything that we have in policy and all resources for for this incident. So um, we have the peer support team. That is uh, anybody from a retired firefighter to a current firefighter, all different ranks, even down uh, within the admin staff of the organization. Uh, we had uh, uh, our safety chief, uh, Goodrich. Um, she was assigned that and she delegated that task. So everybody had contact throughout the day. Uh, we also have a policy, uh, a line in our policy under, um, <coughs> under leave with, with pay that speaks to a traumatic event and time off that the organization will give to the employee to help deal with the physical and emotional uh, trauma of a call or uh, that, that happened on the, on the district clock. So um, that was implemented as well. So overall, um, we, we did, we utilized everything that we had. Uh, we're still in the process of that with those employees and, uh, and keeping a close eye on them. So um, I feel the organization has done a great job so far. Uh, I believe the uh, the mindset of the employees as well is on point with uh, of how they're feeling physically and emotionally, and that's all being currently addressed. So that is a program that we have, and that right. immediately kicks in. It's automatic, right? Correct. Right. Yes. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Good to know. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. I just got two more things. Uh, the training that uh, President Wall and Director uh, Cross were speaking to was, was called Outward Inclusion. And it was a group uh, that we hired. A, 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 we're looking at this company for, uh, for multiple, multiple layers of, of training for the fire district, one of which is leadership training. Um, but this Outward Inclusion uh, training was, was pretty amazing. In, in my opinion, and, and most that attended there, uh, that was the, the reoccurring theme. Um, it was uh, brought on by uh, Steve Sakaguchi and Rich Stenhouse. They did the research with this group um, and uh, this specific uh, uh, instructor um, to come bring this message and deliver it to us. They will be delivering a, a quick five to, to eight minute uh, uh, synopsis of the training in the November's uh, board meeting. Um, I'm excited to have them uh, come present it. And this ties into what we talked about at the beginning of, of this is succession planning, leadership training, and uh, the inclusion within the fire district moving forward. So um, really, really excited for, for uh, specifically this training, um, but the other training that's gonna come uh, for, for our people, for command staff, for the culture of Clackamas Fire. Uh, last that I would like to speak to is the open house that Director Haas was, was uh, referring to. Uh, we took advantage of that opportunity to discuss with those who attended the enhanced levy development. Uh, I've sent you all flyers as well as fact sheet um, uh, that Coastline uh, has, has helped us uh, develop. Uh, the, it was very well attended. We handed out 60 flyers. Um, and well, most we handed out and spoke to, we just didn't hand out. Yeah, handed out and spoke to, yeah. Spoke to. yeah, thanks. Handed out and spoke to 60, yeah. uh, with 60 flyers, but mo most were, were uh, couples, so multiple. We had about 120 citizens that we, that we spoke to. And there was an overwhelming theme 
that came from that meeting, which was very impressive, super exciting, and very motivating for, for the first run at, at, at speaking about this topic. Um, but the, the big point we hit at home was the three community events that we're going to be having on November 9th, November 16th, and January 4th, which will both be virtual as well as in person. And um, there was an overwhelming uh, gratitude from those that we talked to about talking to them about it, and then the message that, that we were delivering. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have a question, Nick. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I want to make sure we are not preaching to our choir. We need to reach out to the community at large that is diverse, meaning may not be supportive of the levy or, or anything like that. So my question, first question is, we originally talked about the idea about 30, 31 cents. And I understand that from that email today, it could be as high as 52 cents. The, the, the pitch to the board that the board agreed to have us push forward, Thomas, was 46 to 52 cents investigation. The 31 sure. cent uh, conversation was well over a year ago. I know, uh, I know, I realized that. So yeah. what changed from there? Did we unearth more challenges that we need to fund? Is that why, what happened? Yes, we looked into out of the future funding task force uh -huh. a, an opportunity to increase services to uh, a wall-to-wall -wall service level increase from all areas of our border, uh, which diversifies uh, increased service to everybody. And to do so, to, to go from being a, a good department to a great department, uh, that's a 46 to 52 cent increase that we're going to need the taxpayers help with to accomplish. And this helps to diversify and increase services all areas of our fire district. I mean, I mean, no, Chris, I'm in no way questioning your scrutiny and uh, tightening the belt. You, I know uh, it's in good hands with you, but I just want to make sure originally, because I have been talking to people, uh, it could be 30, 35 cents. So then so I saw that email today and said, oh, okay. Uh, then we'll have to go up to maybe 40, 60, 52 cents. Just to want to clarify for my own sake. Yeah, so that that uh, that original conversation, we, we have since updated and, and come to the board and, and got approval from the board, Thomas, for that, that, that number of 46 to 52, just based on the, the focus of okay. increasing level of service from wall to wall. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions for Chief Brown? Thank you. R1B, Office of Strategic Services, Assistant Chief Stewart, will give an update. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Madam President. A uh, few couple things to note uh, today. We spoke a little bit about Gladstone, uh, but from a facilities perspective, uh, we were uh, originally anticipated, projected to have uh, Station 22 uh, completed by September 27th. Didn't meet that mark. Uh, and we're currently looking at November 3rd. Um, so, uh, Darren, the public works director at City of Gladstone, um, has been pushing uh, and, and working with the contractor to get it completed as, as quickly as possible. Um, but unfortunately, it's just stretching out past uh, where we wanted to be. So uh, we're working with the City of Gladstone to uh, have them pay for and fund uh, the continued use of the office building, which is sleeping quarters and, and day room and kitchen for the crews uh, across uh, Portland Avenue as well as the apartment uh, behind. So we're looking at that will probably be two weeks. Uh, it's the middle of November that we're looking to rent that. Uh, again, it's uh, City of Gladstone uh, being a good partner and making sure that that's uh, projected out for us. Uh, once we get in, uh, Chief Huffman uh, and, and the crews will be doing some final measurements before they order furnishings. Um, so you see the walls go in and you can see where cabinets are going to be. They want to make sure that they didn't uh, spend money uh, just to spend money a second time. So I appreciate that. appreciate the crew's willingness to, to live and um, put together uh, lifestyle for a little bit. Uh, it's, it's actually funny if you look in their, their station between the, the ninja cooker and the air fryer and the, the crock pot and the, like, they don't, you don't need a stove. <laughs> it's like, there's eating, all these, it's like eating fair food every day. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. 
Um, so that's coming along. Uh, other things on facilities, uh, Rick Huffman is working uh, to, to wrap up uh, the urban renewal district uh, projects within the station one or the Clackamas Town Center area, uh, working on fencing and gates uh, for the station one and adjoining properties. Uh, as well as replacing garage doors, uh, which, by the way, those are really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I haven't priced my own, but we're looking at about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for six of them. So uh, that is getting to the range where we'll have to go out for an RFP. Uh, so Chief Huffman may be coming to you with that uh, in the next little bit, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, you'll, you'll see it. it's going to be over fifty thousand regardless, uh, but we'll see what process we use. Uh, our planning system at Amos uh, is doing a fantastic job. He's been uh, meeting over the last uh, couple months and continuing to do so, meeting with our department heads, uh, whether the division chiefs or, or managers, uh, just working with them to make sure that we're on track with our strategic goals um, and seeing what we can do to uh, keep with the accountability piece of that uh, and really document what they, uh, the work that they and their teams are completing, um, but certainly making sure that we're advising uh, the fire chief where we're at uh, on a regular basis. Uh, tech services is doing a couple pieces. Uh, they, over the last few months, you folks have approved uh, the voice over internet protocol phones, the mobile workforce solutions. Uh, they are working on those implementations. Uh, WIPE is uh, targeted for primary implementation in November. Uh, we, and they have updated almost all the laptops that we received, which are similar to, to what, or identical to what uh, Jess and Tracy are working on, and those should be distributed uh, to those users here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the NPCs, uh, supply chains are still an issue. So uh, we don't have ship dates on those yet, uh, but those will be coming around uh, as soon as we get them. Uh, and then just last piece uh, from the OFCA, uh, a couple things. Uh, one, I was appointed the vice chair of the legislative committee, uh, and then we were also talking to the Oregon uh, State Fire Marshal's office. Uh, and they're working with the governor to uh, the governor's fire service policy council uh, to stand up two uh, task forces or committees, one on urban search and rescue. Uh, that's going to be chaired by Chief Pepple out of Eugene, uh, and then the firefighter health and wellness, uh, which I'll be chair. So, so those are the updates. Happy to answer any questions. Question. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned earlier, Brian, about Gladstone during the interagency report that they have their own levy that you said reduced in November. Is that November 2023 or is it this? November 2023. Yeah, so November 2023, Gladstone. Yeah, yeah. so currently, okay. currently their levy is at 31 cents per thousand. Okay. Um, and we'll be talking about long term where, where we want to be and, and where uh, our contract costs may right. be. Okay, yeah, I'm just curious the date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said November. Okay. Yep, next year. <laughs> okay. Thomas, you have any questions for no, Brian? No, no, thank you. Thank you. R1C Office of Business Services, this is Chief Peters. Thank you, Madam President. I'll start out with health and safety. Uh, during September, they held a firefighter for a day training for some orthopedic uh, physicians and surgeons and physical therapists for them to put on the gear, do the functions of the job, and they're part of our ready rebound network. So they came for the day or kind of put through their paces of, of a one day academy uh, that was well attended. Um, one of the goals from our strategic planning session for uh, human capital was to do policy review and, and through that they developed a, a video series, those were issued, so uh, there's a video of the covering the policy, we assign it to everybody, they watch it and, um, and sign off that they took it. And then uh, the, for September for the FMO office they worked really closely with uh, the sheriff's office uh, on uh, some uh, mysterious fires that were, were being set throughout the month on the spring water in Johnson Creek area. Quite a few of those that were having, so they worked with them. Uh, they've since sort of slowed down and almost stopped. So, but they were very instrumental in helping with that. One more thing on FMO, uh, or I'm sorry, on health and safety. Uh, health and Safety Chief Heather Goodrich was interviewed on a national webinar about Clackamas Fire's wellness program in general and her career in the fire service going through the wellness uh, pieces of that. So uh, she was interviewed for that. Uh, we're pretty proud of her for, for taking part in that. And then for the community services, I'd like to turn the rest of my time over to Chief Whiteley to update you guys himself about where we've been. 
Chief Whitley. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chief Dieters, members of the board. Um, it's throwing me off here. I'm looking at this owl view thing, and I it looks like I'm on a jumbotron in the middle of the room there. So <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to ignore looking at myself there. It's a little distracting. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I was asked to join and uh, share a little bit about community services, what's going on. Uh, I have a long list. I could go on for a long time about the work being done there, but I'll select just a few highlights there. Uh, for community service, there's five of us kind of spread out doing the work of the organization there, at least leading the charge. And obviously, it's supported throughout the organization from other departments, both 40 hour staff and uh, suppression staff. Uh, one thing I did want to highlight uh, in the past, we've talked off and on about this and not in a while is our social media presence. Uh, we work hard to have a good presence there. Uh, the fire chief uh, challenged us to increase those postings a little while ago. And, and as of about six months ago, uh, we've almost doubled our monthly posting on those social media. And, and for any of those who follow those, uh, uh, Tracy is kind of the main face of that there in the room with you. But uh, she does a good effort of broadening the post so it's not always incidents uh, we do employee spotlights uh, feel good stories different stuff like that um, job postings <clears throat> so uh, the, and we continue to try to have that uh, higher presence on the social media and that's also continued to show a, an increase in our followership mm -hmm. uh, the other area i just want to jump on because i want to make sure i think that was some of the questions is some of the community outreach we've been working on uh, kind of this year and then also looking forward. Uh, as we've come out of COVID, uh, uh, we, we've started to see a, an increased request again for our presence at a lot of these events. Uh, we did our best during COVID to have a presence, whether it was virtually or in proper setups with spacing, masks, those type of things. Uh, but this summer, we really saw kind of a push to bring a lot of those events back uh, that we've seen in the past. Uh, just to highlight some of the stuff over the last number of months, uh, we hosted and participated uh, with Clackamas County in some spring town halls related to wildfire, uh, trying to share that information out in the community. Uh, we had Day in Damascus, which was brought back, and that's been a long tradition there. Uh, we heavily participated in the National Night Out, which is, a, again, an annual one. Uh, new to the community is the Gladstone Festival, and we, uh, including the fire chief, had staff there uh, for several days for that event uh, to kind of help uh, keep that tradition going because Gladstone Fire individually was heavily involved in that in the past. Uh, within the Chief's report, you'll see note of it, and I, I'd have to bring it up still, and there's a, a great picture there. Uh, the Oregon City Health and Safety Fair, which was in September. Uh, after a little break from that, that was brought back. Uh, I do want to commend the organization and staff on that one. Uh, the main reason I'll point it out is ever, most everyone's aware uh, that we had the McIver fire the night before uh, leading up to that. And I got a uh, wonderful phone call from Chief Dieters the morning of the event, uh, apologizing, but sharing that uh, we were not going to be able to bring any uh, career uh, crews to the event uh, due to other obligations. And, and I, we completely understood, obviously, uh, incidents are the priority. Uh, you know, Carrie being the leader of that, she tightened her belt, adjusted, moved things around. Uh, we ended up having some volunteers were still able to show up with some equipment and it was very, very successful uh, with even without any heavy apparatus there it folded together nicely and you really couldn't tell they weren't there. Uh, I, the event was well attended a lot of compliments people very happy that that event was brought back. Uh, the other one we're kind of in the midst of right now is um, fire prevention month and we have several open houses, it was one of them was mentioned um, uh, earlier in the meeting. The last remaining open house is on Halloween at Station 18, and that's kind of a long tradition. Uh, volunteers help staff that as well uh, for being part of Halloween and, and kind of costume and handing out candy. Um, with the Gladstone uh, remodel slightly delayed, we do plan on trying to have some version of a grand reopen and open house there at some point, but we've held off on setting those dates till we get a little clearer understanding on the, the construction timelines. Uh, the last thing I did want to note, uh, since we are talking about the foundation, is recognition of some of the work the foundation does uh, going out to the community. Uh, so the CHIPPER grant was established through the foundation that was funded. The idea of uh, proactively supporting people to uh, clean up you know, uh, storm debris, wildfire debris, or proactively get rid of it. Um, and that was a huge program. And over the last couple of years, uh, that program has put $50,000 into the community for those grants for people to, uh, uh, again, take care of 
that and, and help develop those defensible spaces around them. The reason I bring that up is uh, two of our staff members, Carrie Shanklin and Tammy Owen, uh, took on the lion's share of that work with doing site visits to make sure the uh, the money was invested properly and accordingly, like pre-site visits, post-site visits, and approving the refunds of all that that type of work. So uh, they were instrumental in making that a successful program. Uh, I could keep going, but um, I'm, I'll probably just stop it right there. I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Dad. Yes, sir. Well, two questions. Number one, Amy, Amy Jo is retiring this year, right? She is, yes. It's to my understanding. Do I, we I don't know her exact a, timeline. Do we have a replacement in mind? And are we adding any more to that uh, team? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't have the answer to that, though her title's community, uh, a paramedic, that's kind of where it ends is uh, she's under operations and EMS. So I, I don't want to answer on behalf of the other group on that question. I, I can answer that. Uh, okay. she, she retires in December with a work back for a transition period for the, her new replacement, bleed over to train the new replacement. So okay. uh, her official last day with the organization is, I believe, in May. Okay. In June, uh, and and then that new community medic uh, will be off and running to, to to replace her. But we are not adding any more to that position. No, we are no. not adding okay. any more to that position. Okay. okay, thank you. I thought you said you had two questions, Thomas. Oh, the second one. Oh, second one was about the additional member to the team. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Marilyn. Doug, I just had a comment, not a question. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the summary of Facebook posts that you put in the board packet. It's nice to see those, specifically the uh, responses regarding the McIver fire. Um, irregardless of what Estacada elected officials and citizens think, it's nice to see that our own citizens right. uh, respect and recognize what our firefighters and our personnel that went our 87 personnel on the 42 rigs did uh, to assist our neighbor in that fire. So thank you for that summary of posts. It was nice to see our citizens' responses. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I would turn uh, the thank you over to the, the staff that put that together for us. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Doug, are you going to be our operational Santa Claus uh, person this year? To a certain degree, yes, and because that falls under community services, it'll it'll uh, be a little bit different as uh, the organization, I believe, is bringing uh, forward a uh, volunteer coordinator in the near future who will have a uh, significant role in that program as well. But I will still have definite involvement as we've already started working on it because that position hasn't been filled yet. I would expect to start seeing those emails of needing help somewhere, but okay. Yeah, and I believe, um, I, I think I'll be on, uh, I and the volunteer coordinator will be on the docket for November to kind of share the Operation Santa plan for this year. I think so. I see the chief slightly nodding, so I think that's a yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. And Doug, I'd just like to echo what you said about the chipper program. I go to the CPO meetings, and I live in an urban area, but people have uh, tree lots, and yeah. it is extremely popular. Mm -hmm. um, people really value that um, opportunity. So keep up the good work on that. Great, thank you for that feedback. I'll share that with staff. Anybody else? Yeah. In regards to Operation Santa, uh, yeah. just since we brought up the topic uh, with the possibility of the levy in May, if there was ever an Operation Santa program that we would hope to try to get out and do the parades again and do whatever we can at whatever level, this would be the time. So just to throw that out there as those initial meetings are obviously underway. So. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I guess to not leave anybody, what's that? I'm sorry. So. You just said we haven't done the parades for two to three years. Right. And, and we are working on uh, having parades this year to kind of answer your question there, Director Searing. Uh, they probably look a little bit different, uh, not picking up uh, donations during them. Uh, but our goal is to have parades and get back out into the community that way and, and to, to see people. We've heard a lot of feedback. Uh, people love those parades. And so we're working on that right now. Thank you. So, Doug, is there a potential consideration for a brown Santa or a pure English speaking Santa? 
I, we will. Uh, we were always looking for Santa. So if just had to just had to lighten up. It's okay. You don't have to answer. Well, I you think we can put that on a board agenda item. We can vote on that if you want. <laughs> Thomas, I thought that you were the elf that ran behind the sled. No, there. no, Marilyn, I cannot run anymore. <laughs> so you're looking for a softer job? <laughs> yeah, you know, I just we just have to end the meeting with a little laughter, right? Uh, Steve, I just had a question. One of the things here is the fire investigators were looking at the Johnson Creek and Springwater fires. And I know they've been doing the McIver fire. Any any updates on how all that fun started? On the McIver? McIver one. Oh no. Mm -mm. No, no, we're not really involved with the MacIver. Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Uh, with the spring water, there were just multiple, multiple small sets, and so uh, there's a theory, but I have to talk to you about the theory. I have the same theory I have. Yeah, it probably is. <laughs> Any other questions for Chief Reader? Is there Chief Reader? Like Chief Reader, you Thank you. Yeah, actually, I do have one last thing to share. I apologize. I will keep it brief. Um, okay. But I think this is a, a noteworthy. Uh, we just recently, as we're starting to, our community groups are starting to meet again, and we're starting to hear from some of them. Uh, we, uh, working with Chief Mulek there, uh, we are actually um, engaging our station captains and our battalion chiefs to be involved at that level, uh, rather than just one or two of the people to see all the time in terms of uh, maybe a chief officer or something is really getting the opportunity to get the crews there on a personal level to build those relationships. And and we've had a lot of great feedback. Uh, crews are jumping on it and reaching out and starting to build that rapport already. So uh, that's an exciting uh, change that we we have in, in store. And I, th I think it's going to be very beneficial. Thank you. All right. Anything else? All right. R1D, Office of Financial Services, Chief Financial Officer Whitaker. Okay, good evening again. Uh, so the, the financial report is on page uh, 120 of, of your packet. Um, if there are any questions on that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, first, uh, for a change, I have some good, good financial news. Um, so uh, to start um, looking at, at last year's budget and how we ended the year um, and how we're beginning this, this fiscal year I, in, in the adopted budget for, for this fiscal year, 22-23, I had assumed that we would start the, the year with a general fund balance of 15.1 um, Now that we have finished, finalized all of the numbers for fiscal year 21-22, um, I'm actually um, raising that up uh, to a uh, beginning fund balance of 15.6 million. So after all of the year-end adjustments, prior year adjustments, and everything, it looks like we 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 have a, a higher fund balance than than I originally expected. Uh, one of the reasons I had budgeted so low is, is that there were some some concerns about some prior year adjustments that we might have to make and some other things um, to to sort out. And and now that we've done all of that, I'm I'm fairly confident in that that 15.6 million dollar number. So that's good. That's still an, an audited number. It needs to go to the auditor for their their review and, and report. Um, I'm fairly confident that they'll they'll agree with. Um, with Michael Wong and, and my methods, but um, that is that is still a, a tentative on audited number. So that's so that's good news. Um, the second good news is the county um, certified assessed valuation for this fiscal year last week, um, and the growth rate for Clackamas Fire uh, was four percent. Um, so you may recall that uh, back in the spring, the county had told us to expect an AD growth rate of between three and three and a half percent. So we budgeted at 3.25%, but it's now come in at, at a certified value of, of 4%. Um, so that is um, that is good news. It's not, I mean, it's not a, a huge windfall. It's, it's roughly $400,000 more that we would expect this fiscal year than, than, than if it had been a 3.25. But of course, that's that's going to compound and, and grow uh, from a higher base over time. So so also good news. Um, and then I'll throw in one, one piece of not good news. Uh, the other news that came out this month was PERS um, published their new contribution rates for the next biennium starting July 1st, 2023. Um, and so we had received information <laughs> last year that most local governments would see their, their rates, their contribution rates increase by one percentage point. Um, but ours actually, depending on the tier, increased from about 1.5 percentage points to 1.8. Um, so a little more than we um, had expected based on that earlier news. 
Um, so that has kind of a, a budget impact uh, going into, into next year. Um, roughly, um, you know, a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars more than, than I would forecast in, in the last forecast that I did. Um, so that all of that is is offsetting. Um, regarding PERS rates, um, you know, the, this increase was actually fairly light, and that was expected because um, stock market returns were really good until recently. Um, and so I would expect two years down the road, the next buy-in, we'd probably see another um, more significant increase, um, given that um, the rate of return on PERS investments probably are not going to do very well, given the economic trends at the moment. So, um, so with all that said, that that that's kind of the, the final pieces of news that we need to start planning for for next year's year's budget. Um, so I'll be be taking that information and and creating a, a new forecast that will kind of form the basis for the 20, 23, 24 budget process. Hopefully, present that that forecast um, to the board beginning in December, and then that would kick off uh, the internal planning and preparation of, of the budget for for twenty three twenty four. So. Um, that's uh, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention was was to give um, a shout out to fleet and logistics. Um, so to fleet specifically, um, with the winding down of, of the wildland season and all the deployments, that's a very busy time for them to get those those rigs and apparatus out and get them back and clean and back into service. And so appreciate their their extra effort um, throughout throughout the summer on that. And then we just had an academy start uh, last week on Monday. And logistics was busy uh, preparing to get them outfitted with all the, the gear and, and supplies and equipment that they needed. And uh, we were able to, to pass those out to the recruits um, last week. So appreciate their efforts as well. And that's it, unless there's a question. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. Okay, uh, R1E, Office of Emergency Services, Chief Miller. All right, well, thank you. I, uh... I wanted to just kind of put a focus on uh, the Milo McIver fire. Um, as promised, uh, the first of September, we had one more week of summer left and um, then Milo happened and then we had a record October for 80 plus degree days. We just finished up this weekend with the red flag warning. Uh, we had a wind driven uh, fatal fire in Damascus and they have a uh, 2000 acre fire going across the river. So we're very much, um, we're very much still in it. Um, and it seems like Milo McIver was a year ago. Um, so I just want to walk you kind of through where the organization was uh, almost two years to the date. To the day we uh, we were we were going through Riverside and the fuel modeling um, that we had during the Milo McIver uh, weekend was uh, almost identical to uh, what we had um, in September. Of, uh, of 2020, the uh, the big difference is we didn't have the wind. The wind forecast was really shoddy through the week. They didn't. They knew we'd have a peak day. They didn't know when it was going to be. Um, so what we did um, in preparation for this is we started about the beginning of the week, and uh, Clackamas Fire put together um, started to work on an uh, on an IMT uh, assembling and an IAP for the weekend. Uh, so what. We put uh, Steve Sakaguchi, Jeff Beninga, and, and uh, Chris Taylor um, on that assignment. And as they were working through this, the, the incident was was approaching, and it was going to be a significant weekend for for the area. Uh, we met with anybody from all county um, stakeholders, anywhere from the water districts uh, in Boring, knew what would happen if they were running on generator power to PGE uh, to AMR. Um, fire defense board, um, and we were all in this. We were by Tuesday. We were all in a very good spot of kind of what what where we were going to be and whatever whatever his limitations were. Um, we had the OSFM grant that we utilized to uh, upstaff a water tender, a Type Three and a Type Six engine. We used a volunteer uh, Type Six out of station Station Twelve in preparation. So. As we ran into this weekend, uh, our strategy with uh, our incident action plan was to quickly mitigate a fire at a county level, return the resources back to their home agency, and let the um, and let the the agency that uh, that had the incident let them mop it up with limited resources, knowing that the fire could pop up anywhere. So that was our whole focus. So um, countywide, that's really where we were at. 
everybody was in a very good spot. We had crews that were coming back early from deployment from Northeast Oregon um, that had come back, had been demoed in preparation for the wind event that we were gonna have and the weather event. Um, and, uh, and sure enough, it happened in our backyard. So going into uh, this incident, everybody was very well prepared on what the expectation was. Um, we had a good grasp of what our district coverage needed to be. We had a good grasp of, uh, through meetings throughout the week, what our mutual aid partners were able to give with Tualatin Valley and PDX, um, and, uh, and it paid off. So when this happened, when we were working this in the middle of the night, uh, we used mutual aid uh, and automatic aid for the first few alarms. And then as we got up into the third and fourth alarms, uh, we had uh, Chief Carlson and, uh, and Matt English from Canby Fire at Seacom. And uh, they kind of took the reins on the, uh, on the resource management. And, uh, and we were able countywide to keep resources in our own districts and support everything that they needed at the Milo, at the Milo McIver Fire. Um, we had assembled, just to give you an example of where we were with our district, um, we, had, we had Crew 30 um, that we had divided into three squads, one for each battalion. On Friday, we had sent them uh, to uh, Forest Grove, the BODF unit at Forest Grove, where they ended up on assignment overnight. Um, huge asset over there. And they reassembled just about in time for, this, for the Milo McIver fire, and they were part of the, the uh, initial attack. Um, we had uh, district coverage throughout Clackamas Fire. Uh, we had, uh, not beyond mutual aid, we sent a task force from Clackamas Fire. We sent a, a strike team of engines from Multnomah County and uh, Washington County sent us everything that they could and that was two type three engines. So that task force from us and that strike team is what stopped that fire from getting into our fire district down Rutherland Road. Um, we had uh, Chief Cordy with his task force stopped a 10 acre fire, spot fire that was running towards Redland. Um, and uh, and our uh, uh, Matt Hernandez from uh, a crew boss from Crew 30 was absolutely instrumental in hooking that fire um, mm -hmm. around the park. So Clackamas Fire did a phenomenal job. I think countywide we did a phenomenal job. We were way far ahead of where we were in 2020. Um, I, have, I was, shocked at our resource management on the distribution of, um, of resources left in the county. For example, we had engine 314 in quarters the entire time at the boarding station. Um, while there was four plus alarms going on at Milo McIver, we had outstanding coverage. So um, yeah, overall, um, as, the, as the days went on and we, you know, we had crew 30 work on as a contractor with, uh, with ODF once they took over the fire, um, we worked, uh, worked great with, uh, with SKA, with Chief O'Connor, um, our logistics staff, uh, absolutely killed it. Um, our operational staff op absolutely killed it. Uh, Captain Heichmann was instrumental in saving a couple buildings and his crew that he led BC Kenna. Um, we've had, um, emails of accommodations for, um, for BC Kenna from outside the agency. Um, it was pretty phenomenal. So overall, at a, at a very high level, our crews, our crews did phenomenal. Our preparation was on point. Um, I don't think I'd really change a thing if we were to go back and do it again. Um, I think we overall just, I think countywide was just a great unified effort. So um, I think it's important that the board understands that the, the AR from 2020, all the things that we've addressed, um, the onboarding of Jeff and Inga, um, all those things played an instrumental part in, in stopping that fire. I didn't think that fire was going to be done when it was. I called uh, on the phone, I called uh, Patrick Fail from Twalton Valley. He's one of their operations chiefs. And uh, he was on the scene. I said, is this thing crowning trees and running into our fire district? He goes, no, this thing's pretty much out. And that was it. Three o'clock in the morning. He goes, I think we're going to be on our way home here pretty quick. So it was pretty instrumental. So um, I'd love to answer any questions. I know it's just kind of a high level summary of the event, but uh, I think we, I think our organization, I think the county did a great job of it. A couple of comments. Um, first of all, awesome. I think that I thank you for this great thing. This is wonderful. This is great. Great to hear this. But um, from where I live, I can see the fire. Mm -hmm. 
And I was actually, my neighbors could see the fire and they, I would say, you know, they know what I do for a living. And I was getting texts and phone calls about, should we evacuate and what have you heard and all the rest of the stuff. And I actually, one neighbor, I went over to their house and you know, explained it was seven miles away and all that. But I saw another good friend of mine that lives off of Redland Road. And he was sending me text, text pictures on regular intervals, sometimes a lot of them. And then the last text inter text that he sent me was as he's driving away, thinking that he's going to lose his house. Mm -hmm. And so when you put it into the, when you put it that personal, especially you have a good friend, you got neighbors and stuff that are scared. And you got another good friend of mine that is convinced that he's underinsured tonight as right. he's driving away uh, and that he's going to lose all of the hard work. And then the next day he's going home those personal things. I mean, I know you, I don't know how much of that personal stuff, those phone calls and those people, but I know I did. I got people reaching out to me saying, I can't believe I'm actually coming back to my house today. And uh, uh, that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's touching and it's, yeah. it's amazing. And that the fact that nobody was significantly injured and there was what an outbuilding in a house that was lost or I'm not, uh, something basically like that uh, from a spot fire as well. Um, Phenomenal. Yeah, it's, phenomenal. it's it's interesting. Uh, Josh Gerke lives in in that town, and uh, when we were getting information, we were kind of corresponding uh, around nine thirty at night, and then he sent the fire chief a photo from his vantage point. I was like, okay, now this is here. Here we go again, mm -hmm. and uh, that was kind of a humbling photo to get, and that immediately changed our 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 mindset that was activating the IMT sending uh, Mark Corliss who we had as our um, as our section chief he is uh, uh, actually now he's not even a trainee anymore I think he's done with his he's, um, called, he's called he's, he's a qualified uh, section chief uh, we sent him uh, to the fire scene uh, to be field ops with Chief O'Connor um, I think the tactically I think uh, our organization help helping out in deploying and finding that balance between the next call because that was a huge concern of my Jay with when that second call hits where is it going to be and do we got rigs in place and we kept that the entire time mm -hmm. so um granted the next big call didn't happen that night uh but we were set up for it so um i thought that was i thought that was a huge victory um this kind of summarizes too the kind of the year that we've had you know it's really we've had um we've had a, a our, our, our crews have have actually just been putting through the shredder this summer. And, uh, and then this was a massive incident um, and it kept going. And it, I mean, even through this weekend, just to top it off with the, with the Mayday call and top it off with a wind driven structure fire out off of 222nd uh, with the fire fatality. Um, it's just been, it's been a busy, busy year. So we've, uh, we've progressed really well through it. It seems to be a reoccurring theme. I think last year that was the same report that we had. This has been a really, really busy year. Mm -hmm. Our people have been put through the, it's a continual thing mm -hmm. that, we're, that we've been facing since 2020 and likely before. Yeah. About a year before, but. Yeah, we, it seems like historically we kind of judge the fire season on the number of deployments we go on. And we didn't have many this year. They, they, they came late, but we had a bunch of stuff in district. We didn't need it. We had it in our back. We had it in our back. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I appreciate the support for our crews. I think it was, uh, they've done a phenomenal job and they've held in there. They've, they've held their own for sure. So, we're good. Yeah, congratulations to you and to your um, uh, operation staff because this is a far cry from a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it just shows that, that we are willing to learn and to apply those lessons to the betterment of our community. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Marilyn. Thank you. I, I do think it's important to point out here they've done this this year with the with the decrease in staffing that we had to put into play. Mm -hmm. So regardless of the situation, when nine one one happens, they answer the call. But it's something that we we need to constantly be focused on moving forward. Thomas, did you have anything? No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh. Um, R1F, Professional Firefighters of Clarkmouth County, Local 1159, Shop Steward, Andrew Gordian. I Thank see. you, Madam President. Uh, hopefully I'm up on the screen. Yeah, I can see myself. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> 
Uh, well, I really want to thank Chief Brown and Chief Mulek for that uh, because it really has been a tough summer and um, I appreciate the props. So thank you. Um, so just a couple quick updates from us. Uh, we met with the Academy 22-2 uh, today to talk about uh, the local, which was good it was good to see uh, 15 fresh faces. Um, we've been real busy with politics with the upcoming uh, November election. I've uh, been uh, working diligently on D-Shift and moving forward with D-Shift. Uh, implementation will be January 16th. So we have a big shop meeting coming up um this week to talk about that with membership and then uh also uh it's been, been really good to work with the future future funding stream task force uh with, with this levy stuff which uh we're all really excited about so that's pretty much all i have unless you have any questions questions for andrew i have a question for you go ahead at our training last week we talked about the information you're going to get me for the uh, foundation auction yes you got that uh right. yeah i can i can ship you an email jay perfect okay thank you and just not really a question but uh i, I shout out where shout out should happen uh the civil service uh commission when they approved the lieutenant's list there was one guy's name sitting at the top at number one and he's right there in front of us in that big screen <laughs> so nicely done Andrew. <laughs> He's not on the list anymore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. wow. yeah. November 1st is start date. Lieutenant Gordy. Lieutenant Gordy. Good for you. Well, thank you guys so much. Okay. Anything else? All right. R1G Volunteer Association Report, President Carney. Uh, yes, uh, Madam President and members of the board and chief officers. I'd like to depart just slightly from what I normally do, uh, touching on something that uh, Director Fearing and uh, Chief Whiteley were speaking about before, and that was the foundation's efforts uh, with regard to the wildfire. Uh, as you may know, I'm vice president of the foundation, <clears throat> and uh, we have contributed about $1,500 per family to about 120 families that were affected by the wildfires of two years ago. And we are still getting requests in. I think it's speaking well to the fact that we're reaching out and we're willing to accept, uh, to help people and they're willing to accept it. And back to my normal uh, spiel. Uh, there were four training events. They consisted of fire stream uh, applications, bulk load review and deployment, pediatrics, and brief initial reports. Uh, the station coverage was uh, at station 12, 16 out of 30, at station 13, 0 out of 30, at station 21, 5 out of 30 in-house and an additional 14 volunteers signed up to respond from home. We participated in two community events, the biggest one being the uh, uh, safety fair in Oregon City. And uh, as Chief Whiteley said, uh, I think we pulled a good one off there. Uh, that's all I have, unless you have questions. I don't have a question, Jerry. I have a comment. Yes, sir. Your you're speaking coming like uh, the Oval Office presidential state of the union address. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Thomas. I didn't understand you. You are sitting. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas, call me with it later, please. <laughs> Remember the hearing aids. I'm impressed that you come across like the presidential in a state of the union address sitting on the desk. Very presidential. Thank you. It's the state of the, of the association. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you all for your patience and your time. Uh, and your, and Jerry, your support. And your support. We love you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, board members, other than uh, Vice President Sterling's comments about the social media post, does anybody have anything they want to comment on the correspondence or information wise? Just one thing to add after you go. Go ahead. Uh, at the end, I'm, I'm noticing we are going to have the opportunity for public to come. I'm going to take care. Okay, thank you. Copy. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you? Okay. okay. Just want to make sure I didn't see it on there. That's why I just want to make sure. You the next meeting of the board of directors is on Monday, November 21st, 2022 at 5 p.m. Currently, this meeting is scheduled to be a hybrid with the public invited to attend by remote conferencing, but we do expect by next month to be able to set it up so that those public who wish to attend in person will be able to do so. So watch our webpage for that information to confirm it will be there or call Ariel Roberts at um, her number that's listed on the webpage uh, as we get closer to that November board meeting. I'd also like to thank our staff who sat in today for Ariel and really appreciate both of you coming tonight for us. Anything else for the good of you? I don't know why I doubted you, <laughs> President Wall. I apologize. <laughs> you were on it. All right. Okay, nothing further. This meeting is adjourned at 625. <clears throat> Thomas, she has a gavel. You did it.